Hello, hello, hello everybody. I hope that you're well. Welcome to you. If you're watching for the first time, my name is Nicole Louie of NicoleMLouie.com and the creator of the Independent Social Workers Launchpad. Welcome to this space. Um, we're here on Facebook in a private exclusive group for social workers who are interested in independent practice. And yeah, I just want to welcome all our new members. Um, just a reminder that there's loads of content and information in the video section and some resources also to help you get started on your journey to independence. Um, and welcome, of course, as always, to our existing members who helped make this community happen. Um, so welcome to everybody. Um, I'm sure there are going to be some people joining us live. And I know that there are some people that have asked to join the community and they're going to have to, have to catch us on the replay. I'm sorry to you if you've, you've caught this on the replay and I didn't get to welcome you in in time. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how do you know if it's time to stop practicing social work? This is a question that has crossed many a social worker's mind. I've spoken to way too many social workers who have got a passion for social work and who are brilliant at their job but have just worn down. They just feel as though they don't have any skills anymore. They feel de-skilled. They feel like they're not really helping families the way they initially intended to. It's not what they signed up to. They feel like case managers more than social workers are helping families on the front line or individuals. Um, and they're kind of bogged down with the bureaucracy. Hey Janine, thanks for joining. Um, waves to you. You know, they feel bogged down the, by the bureaucracy and they just feel as though they're not getting anywhere. They're fed up of having to deal with the red tape um, and the restrictions, the lack of resources. And so a lot of social workers start questioning if they're in the right place. Do they want to keep doing this? I have had many a colleagues who um, was in social work and doing something completely different. So I've got a good friend who now does dance and teaches yoga. I have another friend who's actually in the film industry and also went into law, um, not doing anything related to social work because they kind of saw what it was like um, and got fed up. I know other social workers who are either selling a complete like a product that's not even related to social work at all, maybe in the health industry. Social work's gone to do all kinds of things and that's just because they get disillusioned. Um, and so this live is really talking about how do you know if that's you? How do you know if it's actually your, your um, time to start thinking, do I want to be practicing social work at all? Because one thing about going independent in practice, as I've, done on other, as I've said in other lives, it's something that you really have to have a passion and determination for, and you have to have drive if you're going to be running your own business. And once you start that process, yeah, you could stop. But there are consequences to that, especially if you've got a family, if you've invested money um, into your business, you've got to be, have a take a calculated step and take a calculated risk. And so I'm hoping that in this slide that that would really help you to do that. So we're going to be covering three main things. Firstly, we're going to be covering um, you being able to know yourself and understand yourself as an individual. What is it that you want and, and how, what do you know about yourself? OK, so that that would help you to de determine whether or not you should be still practicing social work, whether you want to. You can start making a bit of an analysis and reflection. The other thing we're going to be covering is the signs and symptoms that might be telling you mm, I'm falling out of love with social work. And thirdly, what is your goal? What is it that you really want to achieve? Yeah. And some of that may be aligned with independence and some of it may not. Because some people think, OK, I'm going to go independent because maybe that's a natural course or direction. And actually, sometimes it may be just about stepping away completely. And that's OK. It may be something that you come back to at a later time, social work in your life. Um, and so we're going to be covering those kind of things. OK, so let's get started. So firstly, knowing yourself and understanding who you are. We all have different personalities. We all have different strengths um, as individuals. And one thing that I'd like you to do is take an inventory. Um, it's reflection, it's Think It Thursday. And so this is often time when we start reflecting. Yeah, reflecting on what our week has been like. And I always say, start reflecting on the goals that you want to achieve uh, for the following week to come. We're going to be sharing that on Sunday, sharing those goals. 
So as part of that reflection, I'd really like you to start taking an inventory and start thinking. Get your pen and paper out and start making a list, um, a list of your personality traits, okay? Whether they're good, bad, or in between, okay? Everybody's got different personality traits. Start writing them down and come up with at least five elements of your personality, five words that describe how you are and the kind of things that you do, the way you think. You also want to be thinking about what kind of um, personality lead you are. So you know you have choleric, you've got sanguine, you've got phlegmatic, you've got melancholic, okay? And many of us will straddle two of those lanes, but there's always a lead. So I'm kind of a melancholic with a choleric lead, okay? And sometimes they can change around, but melancholic is more of your subdued, kind of, la um, not laid back, because that's more phlegmatic, um, but you're kind of, you can be very kind of down and a bit pessimistic at times. These are things that I've really had to work on. Those are all the negative sides, I guess, of these these um, quadrant types. OK, and cholerics are leaders. They um, can be bossy. Can be bossy, <laughs> you know, great leaders, though, very motivated, go get in. So start listing some of those things down. OK. Um, and I want you to, to notice in yourself, where are you and how has that changed over time? So I can see for myself that, you know, some of my traits have changed. I've um, become stronger in some areas and I've maybe uh, uh, worked less in other areas. So I was going to use the word weaker, but I wouldn't say weaker. I think it's just that I don't use them anymore because I've used different ways of coping and, and strategizing. So I wouldn't say I've become weak in those areas, but they're just not things that I use necessarily so there are whole lists and that's something that I'm going to post I will post um, uh, some information about the four quadrants and the brain um, the phlegmatic the um, melancholic the choleric and the phlegmatic did I say sanguine was the fourth one okay I'll post something about that to kind of help you along so with that I want you to list that and start thinking to yourself okay where am I where do I sit here and I will also want you to think about yourself where you were at the beginning of your social work journey and where are you now and how do you do those traits fit into that, okay? That's going to help you really reflect and think where am I as an individual and who am I today? Because that is really going to lead you and signpost you to where you're going and where you want to go, all right? You may look back after some reflection and think, gosh, yeah, I've really done an awful lot. Yeah, I've really changed in some ways. Or yeah, actually, in some ways, I've developed things that I really didn't like, didn't want to, but I've had to because of the nature of the job. And I've had to, you know, develop tough skin, whatever it may be. You need to take an inventory and see just see where am I at right now? Am I do I like where I'm at and who I am? And is this the person that I want to be and where I am right now for where I'd like to be? Is who I am now going to help me? And what are the areas that, that I'm going to need to, to think about? So moving on to the section where we start thinking about the symptoms and the signs that tell me, actually, I think I might want to be stepping out of social work because I have had to develop this thick skin. I've had to develop kind of cutting ways of cutting corners that has never really been me. I've never been somebody to cut corners, but I've learned to do that. And it sits quite comfortably with me now because I've had to. There's no way that I can do everything on my to-do list, keep up to date with my assessments and serve clients the way they need to be served and spend the quality time with them that I'd like to um, spend with them when I've got all of this going on. It's impossible. And so there may be things that you develop. And I, I can say that for myself, that was one of the things that I didn't like. I, I was never a person that would cut corners on my assessments. And so if it meant staying up really late to do it, that's what I did. Um, and of course, that then has repercussions down the line because, hey, Sylvia, thanks for joining. Of course, over time and as the years go by, the weeks, the days, the months go by and the years that starts building up um, some health issues for you. It starts building up in other areas uh, where you're not spending as much time with family. If you've got children or you've got a family that can become an issue. I know I've had some colleagues who have said their children ask them, how come you're never home? Those kind of things must be really hard to hear coming from your son or your daughter when you're actually helping other people's children, but you're not around enough for your own. And it can be hugely pressurised. And some I've known some social workers who are, you know, looking after their elderly parents. And so 
they're dependent you know they, they need to um be working they need to be working and putting in those hours so that they can pay for um some of the additional care or you know give their parents a quality of life that they wouldn't have otherwise um i've had other social workers who again they're the main breadwinner for the family because their uh, partner works perhaps in a job that doesn't pay so much and so you know they're the ones that are is bringing in quite a decent salary and so they can't afford to not work and the nature of the job is that it doesn't matter what local authority you go to certainly here in, in the uk um it's all much of a muchness from what i've experienced and i've been to quite a number of local authorities and so some of the signs and symptoms that you'll see around burnout is you know the fatigue the constant fatigue the brain fog um the the worry waking up in the middle of the night some people may have insomnia have struggle sleeping might become quite dependent on that caffeine boost in the morning and i know that that's not uncommon for most people in most professions but the reality is the pace of life is really really hectic it's really tough it doesn't matter what industry you're in these days it seems to be a way of life and so it seems that the majority are quite dependent on stimulants to keep them going but that is definitely one that you want to be thinking about and considering um, other symptoms might include um, stress anxiety depression as well and I know that might sound strange because we're social workers and we work with clients with depression yeah but we can also get it ourselves um, I've known colleagues who have experienced had difficult experiences um, with management or, and just the job generally just feeling burnt out and stressed and worried because they feel stuck as well and they feel trapped they want to keep doing social work but they don't know where else to go or how else to make it change and they feel that they they're in they're not in control and that can wreak havoc and that can make you feel quite depressed and sometimes i think we don't pick that up and recognize it in ourselves because we're so busy serving other people who have similar symptoms and we don't even recognize it in ourselves which is strange um but yes hey jen great i'm glad that you could join us today i know usually you're feeding baby at 8 30 right so today i was running late as usual in traffic i'm, I'm working um, on a project at the moment and i've got clients in a particular uh, geographical area and just the weight of traffic getting back is a nightmare but i'm so glad you can join jen so um yeah that's some of the symptoms um, other symptoms would include when you notice to yourself that you're complaining a lot about the job if every day you go in and you find something to complain about and you so much so that you make mention of it and i don't mean that in a critical or bad way because we're i think us brits we're really good at complaining we complain about anything like the weather was really hot a couple of weeks ago we complained that's just what we do <laughs> yeah but what i mean is if you're going in so much so that you know certain things that might come up so for example you might be doing a particular piece of work on the laptop on the computer on the system and something happens there's a glitch in it or you find that you've got a whole nother lot of paperwork to do because it's part of the bureaucracy that comes along with social work and you feel so um kind of downtrodden by it but that you either speak out about it and complain about it to somebody um or that you in within yourself it just makes you feel like so suppressed and so oh my god i can't believe i'm having to do this i really hate this i don't want to do this and immediately your thoughts start going into like a washing machine cycle that god why am i doing this again why am i here you know i really hate this 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 job i really hate this part of the job i don't know if i want to do this anymore if those kind of thoughts are coming to your head then those are some other signs that are telling you maybe it's time to step away from from practice in social work um, if you've actually taken some steps to sit down and actually start writing things down and saying what other jobs are there that I could do what other things might I like to do you may have explored that and I know again many social workers I've spoken to they might want to do pottery some might do art some might do something just completely different I've got social workers who do date DJ and I know social workers who are DJs at the weekend never come across that until recently um, but yeah different things and if people are thinking about moving into something else full time then that is telling you that that's a definite sign and symptom that is telling you maybe it's time for you to step away from social work yeah and again that may not be step away forever it might just be step away for some respite have a break 
Um, many social workers, if they're agencies, they may say, I'm going to go on a, a month's break. And that might be all you need to just take yourself away for a month, do something different um, or nothing at all, even better. But the reality is the majority of people don't have that. The majority of social workers that I've come across have got families, oftentimes young families um, or families that are kind of in the teenage to, to adult years. You, you're kind of flittering between, between those three areas as far as I know and that I've experienced in all the social works that I've met. So it's really important that you're able to recognise the signs and symptoms for yourself that are making you think, where am I? Does this fit and align with who, as I said in the, the previous task, um, who I am now, who you were before? And, you know, is this part of the journey that you wanted for yourself? So Sylvia's saying it may be that you need an outlet. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's the thing about work life balance. And I've done a live video about that as well, about how do you really have work life balance? Um, and the reality is there's no such thing as an, a complete balance. It's always going to teeter, isn't it? Because sometimes we go through bottlenecks. We go through periods where things are really busy. I've experienced it myself, even as an independent. Sometimes life work life balance wane. But work life balance is um, a rule as opposed to the exception. When I was in local authority work, it was the, you know, it, it was the work life balance was not a thing. I didn't have work life balance. I was overworking myself all the time. That was the rule. And so, you know, it's it's taken those things into stock as well. So Jen says, I've been there. I took up running instead of comfort eating through my stress. Brilliant. And that is so healthy. I'm, I've got asthma, so you will not catch me running unless I've got to run for a bus. And even then I'll be like, I'll catch the next one. I really don't run for anything. <laughs> I really don't. But that is a brilliant outlet. It's so healthy. It gets all the blood rushing through and the oxygen going through all the cells. It's feeding the brain. It is a brilliant outlet to do exercise, to, to um, work on stress. A lot of people comfort eat. A lot of people um, self-medicate with cigarettes and sometimes recreational drugs because, yes, social workers do that too. Um, I've come across social workers in the past that have said, yeah, they've, they've tried cocaine and they've done things like that which I'm flabbergasted at, but it's a reality, clearly. Um, and, you know, so finding healthy outlets, uh, as both Sylvia and Jen has just pointed out, is so important. Um, Sylvia's saying social work should not be so all-consuming, so we have so many, as we have so many aspects. Absolutely. I mean, as, as individuals, we're physical, we're mental, we're spiritual, we're sexual, and we're social beings. And so it's with all of those different layers, we need to be experiencing on a daily basis or a weekly basis. You know, we need to have, um, like you said, outlets and we need to be in touch with all those different sides of ourselves. And if all we do is work and we're working in a profession which is not only physically demanding, it's mentally and emotionally demanding. We deal with a lot of trauma. You know, we work with people that have, you know, are dangerous individuals we work with individuals who have experienced trauma and we have to hear those traumatic events and become secondary victims of trauma we have to go through all sorts of things we have to sometimes remove children if you're in the children family space i can remember the very first time i had to remove a, a, a baby from a mother i've had to do that on three or four occasions i think i've had to remove children that's traumatic it is not a nice experience and we have to deal with these things day in and day out. And and I think we just kind of get on with it because it's part and parcel. But we don't actually recognize the post-traumatic stress symptoms that we can experience from it. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, you would have heard me say on other lives. I don't know how many of you watching this have ever had experiences where you've had to have the police involved because clients have been harassing you or stalking you. You know, we, we deal with some really serious stuff. We deal with some high profile cases sometimes that's in the media I know I have um you know it's no joke it's not for the faint hearted and we have to deal with that as well as dealing with other professionals and boundaries and professionals not understanding who we are what we do all of those things come into play uh, we also have to deal with the media we have to deal with um society and the stigma attached to being a social worker sometimes you say you're a social worker and some people are like oh and I'm always like, oh, okay, is that is that not a good thing? Because I'm really proud. I'm like, I'm a social worker. And sometimes the response isn't as I expect. 
but you know that's what we have to deal with and that then we that doesn't even include like our own personal lives and our family issues and our own issues that we may have may or may not have you know they're huge things to to consider and so that takes me on to the third and final which is thinking about um or where do you want to be or, you know what is your goal what is your end goal you know that will tell you whether or not you want to step away and stop practicing social work because as you know there are alternatives a lot of social workers just think well right i have to put up and shut shut up or i just leave the profession actually no there's there is a middle road and it's a wonderful road it's a road of independence and so you've got to consider to yourself what are my goals what is it that i wanted to achieve when i started becoming a social worker what was it that i envisaged that i hoped for and since you've been working what are the skills and the tools that you have developed that you can actually pull out of yourself and remember that you actually do have that you can actually implement and start saying let me create something let me create something that hasn't been created um, before or make a service that's even better where some somebody is in this space doing what I would love to do. There's plenty of room for everyone. How many estate agents do you see on a one high street or sweetie shops or Sam chicken so shops? Um, that's OK. I'm talking about UK shops now. Um, you know, whatever country you're in, there's always going to be more than one of those shops. Right. Aren't they all making money? Aren't they all in business? Absolutely. So there's room for everyone. It doesn't matter if you want to do something that's similar to what somebody else is doing. You can still carve out a niche. Um, and even if it's as niche as it can be, you can still do it. And that is your other alternative. But it needs to be aligned, honestly, with where you are. And is that what you want to do and where you want to be? Because it may be that you feel, feel to yourself, I just want to take a step back for a little while, actually and do nothing related to social work and just go rediscover myself. And I have a resource um, that I had posted a couple of months back, I think now, um, where it kind of takes you through your skills and help you revisit some of those things if you're stuck um, for what for, for where to go next. And again, as I said, all of this kind of stuff is gonna go deep in the course. It's gonna go really deep and take you for a step-by-step -step structure that helps you to unpack that. Um, so let me just look at some of the comments um, to our personalities. Yep, even flow. It's back to that need for self-care being paramount. If not, we won't have much to give. Absolutely. Sylvia, you hit the nail on the head. I was just um, saying earlier on that, you know, in order for, for us to be advocates, we have to be able to advocate for ourselves. And I found that social workers aren't very good at doing that. I found the majority of social workers say nothing. They just put up with bad treatment um, and poor treatment and, and kind of doing what they're told, you know, been told to jump and saying how high and they're not happy and they're just suffering in silence. And I don't advocate for that at all. I think it's important that you speak up. And when you speak up, if you don't get what you want um, through negotiation, then you, you make a choice. You've got to make a choice. But the choice is always ours. There's always a choice. Even if you make no choice, that's a choice. I'll say that again. Even if you make no choice, that is still a choice. Okay? And then whatever comes as a result of that is what you then have to deal with. So we've got to take responsibility and start making our lives and carving out our lives the way we want it to happen. I want to shout out again like Jen you know, she took action. She said, I'm not happy with how things are. She left her job. That was a hugely brave step. She's on maternity leave and decide that she's not going back. That's a huge, huge step. And she's now took action, got a job, starting doing other things and doing brilliantly. But that would never have happened if she just put up and shut up and stayed where she was and said, OK, after maternity leave, I'm going to go straight back. We've got to take accountability for ourselves and for our own lives. The time is today. It's absolutely right now. It starts with the thoughts and then you start putting that into action. So I'm going to need, re read the last comment. Jen says, definitely agree. Sit down for the most of the day, but come home exhausted. Yep. A supportive partner friend is crucial, I think. Absolutely. And I've covered that also in a video about a support network. You, I would not have survived even as an independent social worker without that support network because You've got the isolation and I was learning business as I was going and, you know, having somebody to talk to that's on a similar journey <clears throat> has been absolutely crucial and amazing. So 
thumbs up i absolutely agreed all of those things so thank you to all of those who um have joined and participated jen sylvia and whoever else and janine thank you so much for joining the live and thank you for those on the replay put your comments um in and please do the work if you you joined halfway go right back to the beginning and i i asked you to get your pen and paper out and start scribing and making a list and i and i will um post about the four quadrants of the brain so you can start looking i'll send you a link um of what i use and it was a sermon that i watched actually that went into great detail about this um but i will share just something that is a, probably a pdf um, for you um, so you can have a look at that and that will help you in your task so think about again just in summary you know who you are where have you developed as a practitioner from the start of your social work journey to where you are now um, and then second of all the signs and the symptoms what are the ones that I spoke about that resonate with you be really honest with yourself where are you and you there might be others that I didn't list because not an exhaustive list because um, different things show up differently for different people and then finally, where do you want to go? What is your goal? And from the first two tasks that you would have done, will that help you on your journey? Is it a time where you say, I just need to step back actually? Or is it a time where you say, yeah, I want to go forward. I want to move forward. I want to do something different. I want to take charge. I want to take control of my life. So I want to encourage you, whatever you decide is perfect for you at this stage in your life. And I'm just thankful that you allow me to... Um, help you on this journey and to be with you all thanks Sylvia good night to you too um thank you for helping me allow me to be part of your journey and you've been part of my journey too um I love that you guys are in this group and how engaged you are and stuff you're very welcome Jen and yeah we'll be back again tomorrow so and I won't be in this location I'm going to be in a different location again I'm going to be moving about a lot over the next two weeks so I will tell you where I am tomorrow I'll see you then. Take care. Have a great evening. Bye.